Hello, my name is Jane Duran, and I'm the author of a new book called The Clarity of Distant Things. This is my sixth collection of poetry, but it's my first to be published by Carcanet. My book is made up of two sequences, Gridlines, which is about the life and work of the North American artist Agnes Martin, and Miniatures of Al-Andalus, which is about Islamic Iberia. I wanted to talk a bit about why these two subjects were of compelling interest to me, two such different subjects. So to cast light on this, I, I thought I'd tell you about myself. I was born in Cuba and raised in the United States and Chile. My father was Spanish and he fought in the Spanish Civil War on the Republican side. At the end of the war in 1939, he was one of the lucky ones who escaped from Spain. He escaped on a British ship and he found refuge in England where he met my mother and they went to live in the United States. My father remained passionately attached to the homeland he never returned to and our family formed part of a community of Spanish exiles in New York City. When I was a teenager, my father encouraged me to visit his family in Spain, and I traveled with the Lorca family in Andalusia. My mother was American. My maternal grandmother was from the South. She was from Atlanta, Georgia. She spoke with a very pronounced Southern accent. And my grandfather was English. I can say that my deepest feeling about any land is for the countryside around my grandparents' house in Wilton, New Hampshire. Farmland, woods, rivers, waterfalls, hills, spruce trees, birch trees. I return to that landscape and its weather again and again in person, in my imagination and in my poems. My husband is Algerian. Our son was born in Algiers and we live in London. So mine is a family of different cultures and some uprootings. So the itinerant life, what it is like to be displaced, this carries personal resonances for me. Agnes Martin's life was largely itinerant. She was born in Saskatchewan on the Canadian prairie in 1912. And her parents were early settlers there. Her father was a wheat farmer. Agnes Martin moved to the USA in her late teens. When she was in her forties, she moved to an artist community on the waterfront of lower Manhattan called Coenty Slip. And here she began to paint using penciled grids over painted surfaces. Now this doesn't sound very exciting, but when you see her paintings, they are really marvelous. She explained many years later, when I first made a grid, I happened to be thinking of the innocence of trees. And then this grid came into my mind and I thought it represented innocence and I still do. And so I painted it and then I was satisfied. I thought, this is my vision. Her grid paintings were fascinating to me when I saw them at the wonderful Tate exhibition of her work in 2015. Standing back from the paintings, the effect of those hand-drawn rectangles, many, many tiny rectangles etched into oil or acrylic, it was dazzling and uplifting, so many feelings at once. But also the breadth and openness they suggested also evoked for me something about the United States, the sweep of the United States, and linked with my own memories. 
So this is a short poem about one of her paintings called The Tree, which is really gray rectangles. The Tree. I must visit my tree one last time, so I will have no regrets before it disperses entirely, before it disappears into the wind of gray rectangles. A decade later, Agnes Martin left New York. She abandoned her community in Coenty Slip and she set off in a pickup truck on a long solitary road trip to the west of the US and to Canada. Eventually she settled in New Mexico. I came to associate her journeys with those grid lines in her paintings that ended at the borders of the paintings, yet they seem to continue beyond those. And I thought of those intersections in the grid lines as stopping points in the journeys she made in her life. One of the places in New Mexico where she put down roots, in fact, the first place she put down roots after her road trip was the Portales Mesa. She began to build on the land. It was an austere life, an isolated life. One room adobe. I smooth a layer of mud over the adobe walls, although the grid made by the adjoining bricks still burns through. Nothing is missing here. The high mesa rolls out pine trees for a log studio. Dirt, straw, and pine are here for the taking. Sagebrush flats, dry riverbed, no one to talk to. The theme of displacement and migration surfaces again in my second sequence of poems, miniatures from Al-Andalus. The sequence begins with the invasion of Iberia by an Arab and Berber army in the year 711. They came from North Africa, they traveled from North Africa across to the Iberian Peninsula. And the sequence ends with the expulsion of Muslims from Iberia centuries later. In between these two momentous migrations, the invasion and the expulsion of the Muslims over seven centuries later, there developed an extraordinary rich and diverse culture in Islamic Iberia, which my poems touch on. How to access images so that I could understand this culture better or see it or write about it. Many of my poems are inspired by miniatures from the illuminated Cantigas de Santa Maria, which the Christian King Alfonso X commissioned in the 13th century. These miniatures are vibrant and colorful, delicate, beautifully executed, but they're windows on many aspects of life in medieval Iberia. And they even depict battles between Christian and Muslim armies. And of course, I was drawn to the surviving artworks and artifacts from Islamic Iberia, from Al-Andalus itself, an astrolabe or a mural, a bronze perfume bottle, a lusterware bowl. Perhaps each had something to reveal to me about Al-Andalus or its downfall. Nazrid lusterware. A gold-brown ship spins in the sun, sails bow and stern, curve up the walls of the bowl, 
to a fine cobalt limb. No one is going anywhere. Four fish swim underneath in the glare. The ship tosses in the noon of its inquiry. I think of my father on the deck of a British ship in the spring of 1939, looking out at the coast of Spain as he prepares to leave his country for the last time. The land and culture we grow up in exerts a powerful pull on us and it never goes away. Even if we have migrated from that land permanently, even if decades of absence have passed. The last poem in my sequence, Miniatures from Al Andalus, is called Red Earth. Red Earth. In my hands, I take that red earth that crops up everywhere, crumbles and clings. I see it here and there in vineyards or running with the urine of horses on dirt roads. Its light is in the red tiles on the roofs of long farms and in the clay terrain of ceramic bowls and oil lamps. It is the idea of staying, a grant of earth, the earth I interrupt now with my hands. Thank you.